I love this one because it makes me think of a moo cow. It's a moo cow. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. A Dalmatian Jasper. Well, I hate it now. It's a Dalmatian. I'm going to claim it as the moo cow crystal. The moo cow crystal. <laughs> Welcome to Blood, Guts, and Booze. I'm Olivia. And I'm Kendra. This is a paranormal and true crime podcast here to frighten you and make you question the world that we live in. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into this. Listener discretion is advised as these podcasts are not for the faint of heart, nor are they PG. Welcome back, listeners, to week three of Spooktober. Ooh. We really need sound effects. Yeah, we really do. My, speaking of quick tidbit before we get started, Mm -hmm. my aunt tagged me in a video of my cousin. She's five years old. Same age as your child. Love it. And she did this creepy voice. And it was creepy. And she, she said, you know, her daughter's willing to do creepy phone calls. And I was like, maybe she can help us with sound effects for the podcast and... Of course, I would love a creepy phone call. <laughs> now it's going to be arranged, so who knows? Maybe she'll give us some creepy, creepy voices. It's so funny. She's literally like, hello, hello. <laughs> like, it's, it's so cute. I love it. And She's, children are just naturally <laughs> creepy. Yes, they are. And they're surprisingly a lot more morbid than I thought, too, sometimes. Yes. Children are... Very scary. Mine likes to constantly remind me that I'm going to die soon. I think that's just what happens with kids that age because I know of other children that worry about the same issue. (laughs) So this week, I am going to be bringing you a case that started on Devil's Night, not Halloween. And it is the case of Martha Moxley. You, you should have done this the last week, but I get it. You're going for gr- you're going in order of gruesome. Trying my best to. Um, I don't know if I actually know this case, so I guess we'll find out. Excellent. I normally start to remember once like I start details are because I'm not gonna lie. I have a pretty good memory, but I Names do smoke blurry. weed, and you know, shit gets forgotten. Until things are remembered. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Well, let's dive in. (laughs) So Martha was born August 16th, 1960. She was 15 years old when this took place. So Martha and some friends decided to go out on October 30th, 1975 in Bell Haven, Greenwich, Connecticut. They wanted to participate in quote unquote mischief night. Mm. I wish I was alive in the 70s. Oh my god, me too. My mom tells me all the time I was born in the wrong time. Yeah, I really wish that I was like a a teenager in the 80s, because I would have rocked those fucking outfits in high school. I just wish I was more like a vampire and just alive at the same age through every decade over the last 100, 200 years. Or eternity, because... I would love to see how history plays out, and I think it'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. But you've seen my natural hair. It is already big and crazy. If I was in the 80s, I wouldn't have to worry. I could just let it be. Yo, mine's just... Be a natural-ass lion. Straight as shit. Mine (laughs) fell out after two hours. Not even two hours of being at prom. Like, fuck my hair. (laughs) It it don't do shit. Mine won't decide on whether it's um, straight, wavy, or curly. It's just I there. I just killed mine with bleach. Mm. It's dead. Probably why it won't curl. Been dying my hair since I'm an 11. Yeah, I started in grade 8. Anyways, so let's back to a different teenage girl here. Woo! The group ended up across the street from Martha's house at her neighbor's, where 17-year-old Thomas and 15-year-old Michael Shakel lived. Hmm. According to Martha's friends, she began flirting with Thomas and eventually even 
kissed him. Oh, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Martha was last seen that night, quote, falling behind the fence with Thomas near the pool in his backyard around 9.30 p.m. Fallen behind the fence. That's what her friends apparently were quoted saying. So I don't know what they was doing, but yeah. Maybe they were drunk? Nope. I mean, I'm climbing challenge, so I understand why she fell over the fence. Maybe it was like a 70s term, though, of like, you know... Maybe, I don't Jumping know. over the fence? I, I was thinking know. more like, you know, they were falling in love behind the fence. I don't know. Here I'm literally thinking of them trying to fucking escape, and I'm like, yeah, I get it. Anyways, <laughs> the next time that Martha was seen, she was lying dead under a tree in her backyard. Oh, no. Yes. Her pants and underwear were pulled down, but she had not been sexually assaulted. Thank God. Surrounding her were broken pieces of a golf club. And it was determined that she was bludgeoned and stabbed with it. Oh. She was hit yeah. so hard with the golf club that it actually broke. What the fuck? Um, and it was metal. <clears throat> so the prime suspect right away was Thomas, as he was the last person that was seen with Martha. Thomas was cleared, even though his father forbade access to his school records and mental health records. Hmm. Another suspect was Kenneth Littleton, who had started working at the Shakel House just hours before Martha was last seen. Oh my god. Now, what about Thomas's little brother? Well, Michael claimed, you're gonna like this, Michael claimed that he was window peeping and masturbating <laughs> in a tree outside of Martha's house between 11.30 and 12.30 a.m. that night. Oh no. That's what he was doing. So, that was his alibi. Fap, fap, fap. Yep. So, I mean, you know, 15-year-olds, they... I get it. 15-year-old boy is going to touch his penis a lot. So, 15-year-old Michael had already been abusing alcohol for two years. Oh. Yeah. He reportedly flunked out of several schools and was a horrible student. His life basically went downhill after his mother died of cancer. Oh, that's kind of sad. And no one was actually charged in the case... And the case went cold for several years. Hmm. During that time, Michael and Thomas changed the story for their alibi several times. Eef. Then two former students from a school that for troubled youth actually came forward, claiming that Michael had admitted to killing Martha with a golf club. And one of them testified later that Michael had stated, I'm going to get away with murder. I'm a Kennedy. <laughs> so... Side note here, Michael and Thomas Shakel are nephews of Ethel Shakel Kennedy, who was the widow of Robert F. Kennedy. Interesting, but that don't mean shit. Yeah. You killed someone. So fast forward a couple years. In 1978, Michael was arrested for drunk driving and sent to a treatment program. He ran away twice and, was fi and he finally left after two years. He also attended several drug rehabs during the 80s and was eventually completely sober sometime in his 20s. So, you know, good for you. Sobriety is not an easy thing if you're a full-on addict. So after he became sober, he tried to become a professional athlete. He competed on the international speed skating circuit and even tried out for the 1992 Winter Olympics in France. Interesting. That's the year we were born. Yes. He got married in 1991 to professional golfer Margot Sheridan, and they had one child. But I Margot. Love that name, Margot. Me too. Like Margot Robbie. Oh, she's amazing. Um, but Margot did file for divorce in 2000, right after Michael was finally arrested for Martha's murder. Get it? That's so, completely understandable. <laughs> yes. So the police had reopened the cold case, and for 18 months, they gathered evidence and were finally able to make an arrest in the case. Everyone was already convinced for years that Michael was the killer, but finally on January 9th, 2000, an arrest warrant was issued for Michael Shakel. At the time, it stated that it was for an unnamed juvenile in connection to Martha's murder, hmm. but Michael surrendered later that day. 
He was released on a $500,000 bond, and on March 14th, he was arraigned for murder in a juvenile court, since he was 15 when he committed the murder. Don't worry, though. By January 2001, a judge ruled that he be tried as an adult. Good. He's like, well, you know what? You're an adult now, so fucking suffer the consequences. To quote you, if you want to be, if you want to do adult things, mm-hmm. then you will be charged as an adult. What? what we should make that into a merch. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael's trial began May 7th, 2002. His alibi during this was that during the time of the murder, he was at his cousin's house. Not masturbating by a tree, by the way. (laughs) Maybe he was at his cousin's house masturbating by a tree. Maybe. (laughs) I knew that you would like that, so I had to add it. (laughs) Exactly one month later, he was found guilty and sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. Michael tried to appeal in 2003 stating that his case should have gone through juvenile court rather than the Supreme Court. No, fuck you. And that the statute of limitations had expired on the charges against him and that there was prosecutal, prosecutorial misconduct. In January 2006, his appeal was denied. Good. In July 2006, with a new lawyer, he attempted to get his case reviewed by the Supreme Court And again, he was denied. Then, in 2007, with two new lawyers, Michael tried to get a new trial with new evidence in the case. Michael had hired a private investigator and was able to actually get new information on the case. He is pretty fucking determined. Yeah. (laughs) Like, real determined. So, Tony Bryant, a former classmate of Michael's, was interviewed stating that on the night of Martha's murder, one of his companions had stated that he'd wanted to rape her. Ew. He also claimed that he had never come forward before this because he was afraid that he would be tagged for the murder because he was black. 1970s. I get it. Sadly, it makes sense. Yeah, that sucks so much. Makes you wonder, though, how often that has happened. Probably a lot more than we want to admit. Mm -hmm. So on October 25th, 2007, the Supreme Court denied the request for a new trial. Then in 2009, they appealed the decision, and in April 2010, that was also denied. So a lot of in and out throughout the years. I'm telling you, this guy really tried to get out of prison. So then two years later, on January 4th, 2012, his attorneys argued for a sentence reduction instead. Again, based on the fact that he should have been tried as a juvenile. And on March 5th, 2012, that was denied. His first parole hearing was held later that year, on October 24th, and he was denied. And then his next parole hearing was scheduled for October 2017. Michael continued to maintain his innocence this entire time. So in October 2013, he was finally granted a new trial. This time, the main argument brought up was that Michael did not get a fair trial the first time and that his lawyer didn't represent him well. It was also argued that his lawyer had cared more about the fame and the money from the trial than actual justice. Michael finally won. Hmm. Interesting. And on November 1st, 2013, he was released on a $1.2 million bond. The conditions of his release were zero contact with the Moxley family, he must be monitored by a GPS device, must periodically check in over the phone, and would not be allowed to leave the state of Connecticut unless granted permission. In 2016, though, the Connecticut Supreme Court reinstated Michael's murder conviction stating that there were overwhelming evidence against him and that he had adequate representation. By 2018, prosecutors had asked that his bail be revoked and for Michael to be sent back to prison to finish his original sentence. There was a chance for a retrial. But on October 30th, 2020, so last year, almost 45 years after the murder, it was decided that Michael would not be retried and he is now a free man. Damn. 
Mm-hmm. What the fuck? So I got a little bit of trivia. Robert F. Kennedy wrote a controversial article in 2003 about Michael's innocence and that he believed that Kenneth Littleton was the real murderer. He even wrote a book about it in 2016 called Framed. Hmm. Michael was diagnosed as dyslexic at 26. Michael graduated college with a bachelor's in English. Interesting. And just just to let you guys know, when I first wrote that, I spelled English wrong. Because I was <laughs> typing too fast. And I was like, wow, Kendra, wow. Huh. The fact that Michael and Thomas altered their stories was leaked to the press before an arrest was made. Their father was an abusive alcoholic. The Shakel children were given unlimited amounts of money and very little supervision growing up. There were actually diary entries from Martha presented in the 2002 trial. They talked about Martha's relationship with Tom and how it bothered Michael. And they're actually one of the links that I have that Olivia will put on the blog. If you would like to go read them, they're, you know, I think they're worth the read. Tony Bryant is Kobe Bryant's cousin. Huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Michael now lives in Westchester County, New York. And the, keys, and the case was featured on Unsolved Mysteries in 1996. Interesting. It is one of the few Unsolved Mysteries that has been, quote unquote, solved. Hmm. I love that show. That... That was interesting. No, I have not heard that case before. Sweet. I figured the Halloween ones, you would probably basically know all of them. Because you're all about the Halloween, you know? Yeah, but I'm more into, like, the paranormal for Halloween. Whatever. And speaking of that, I'm going to talk about an urban legend this week, Kendra. Ooh! Mm -hmm. have I, do I know it? Well, have you heard of the black-eyed children before, or the black-eyed kids? I have, and... I think only once, and I want to say it was a Kendall Ray video that I watched about it, perhaps. Might not have been her, but somebody like her, maybe. Or maybe Loie Lane. Maybe, because I, I know I have both of them, and then there's a, a girl named Stephanie that I also watch. Okay. She's a redhead. She's really pretty. <laughs> but I love Kendall Ray. She's actually, watching her videos was the thing that convinced me to do this with you. Oh, I love it. Yes. I so, like her, too. Thank you. You're my inspiration to, you know, do something that I love now. Yeah, I love Kendall Ray. I actually just discovered her maybe about eight months ago, around the time that we started this podcast, I guess. And, yeah, I haven't watched everything yet, but I love her stuff. I watch her on Snapchat now. Oh, I didn't know she had yeah. Snapchat. Cool. Got little stories on Snapchat. So I don't know very much about them. I just know of them. Okay. If that makes sense. Because I didn't actually finish the video. I just remember kind of like seeing it and starting it kind of thing and been like, I don't know, this is like weird or something and like stopped watching it. Because it wasn't my yeah, thing. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Because they're like, oh, these people push this person off the cliff. And I'm like, please tell me more. <laughs> and they're like, here's some ghosts. And I'm like, eh, tell me about the p push cliffer. The, the, the cliff pusher. <laughs> the push cliffer. Well, Words. It's funny because we're going to kind of get, we'll get into it. But it's funny that you said fuck ghosts because I personally don't think that these are ghosts. I didn't say these were ghosts. I'm I just know. saying I usually skip those I videos know. to learn about the murdery things. <laughs> well. I've learned so many cases from Kendra. <laughs> All right. Well, for, I guess, Kendra and our listeners that only might know a little bit about the Black Eyed Kids. Or none. Or none. Yep. Uh, I'm going to call them B-E-K probably most of the time during this episode because that's one of the short forms for it. Okay. So are they black-eyed kids or black-eyed children? They're both. Or black-eyed peas? 
Gotta get that. <laughs> Gotta get that. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> love. Start a bit. They're, they were <laughs> so good back in like fucking 2010. And that time. Yeah. Mm. All right. So black eyed kids, they have pale skin, pitch black eyes, and they are always said to be around the ages of 6 to 16. Mm-hmm. They are always asking for some sort of help mm-hmm. or a bathroom break. <laughs> I oh. get it. When you got a shit, you got a shit. Uh, they are also very persistent in their asking. Some this is pe- the stuff I did know. Yeah. This is like the most common information Mm -hmm. but I have a few stories that I'm going to explain. I'm just saying that is Mm -hmm. basically everything I know. You've covered it. Thanks. Perfect. Well some people have extreme negative and sinister feelings when they encounter the black eyed kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, Other encounters have been downright dangerous and completely terrifying experiences. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Black-eyed kids have been seen all around residential areas, highways, parking lots. They are also seen as a hitchhiker or a lost child out wherever. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's kind of like, you know, cat and mouse. They're they're pretending to be, like, bait, and they're luring you into a trap almost. Like a woman in white. Yes. I like it. I said a couple episodes ago that the women in white ghosts are... I really like those. <laughs> I want you to cover one one day, please. If they're real or if that's just a supernatural thing. No, there's cases of women Sweet. in white. Sweet! Do it! Women in white, women in black, women in gray, women in red. Also, can you cover sirens sometimes? I will cover sirens for you. Thank you. Once a passerby has pulled over to assist the distressed-looking child or children, they will persistently, I guess, bug and harass this person or sometimes even attempt to attack them or get violent. Oh, no! Uh, So, black-eyed kids have been known to bang and knock on people's doors and car windows to ask for help or like I said those bathroom breaks hey I know you're in your car but am I allowed to pee no shit eh they have stalked people in their vehicles and when people have been on their bikes passing by them can you imagine being on your bike and all of a sudden passing by like two children in the middle of the fucking woods and they got pitch black eyes and they're just like, give me your fucking snacks. Nope, pedal harder. Bye. Yeah. I'm Bye. not sharing. No. I don't even share my snacks These with Nick. These are my snacks. I don't even share my snacks with Nick. You, you shared one snack with me once. Once. Yeah, I was allowed one. One after eight chocolate straw. Yeah. <laughs> I felt pretty privileged. I don't share. She I grew up with a little brother. I don't share. She fed me Thanksgiving dinner once, though. I did. Was great. I was pretty drunk. You were. I was not. I uh, know. I was pretty... I day drunk because we cooked a turkey in the yard in a garbage can. Yeah, I brought my child in the <laughs> and, you know. She tore my cupboards apart. I remember saying, Aunt Olivia's fine. Everything's fine. After I got sick because me and Jen just don't get along just thought you were being silly. She Art- was too little to know what was going on. Artie thinks you're a boob. It's okay. I know. I am a boob. Men in black have been known to be associated and linked with black-eyed kids. Weird. Okay. <laughs> so, aliens. Maybe. Aliens! So, what are the black-eyed kids? We both did the same hand gestures at the same time. (laughs) Aliens! Uh, What are the black-eyed kids, and what do they want from us? There have been theories... Souls. There have been theories that, uh, from people, that they believe them to be aliens. 
a hybrid, vampires, fairies, change, changelings, demons, or some sort of spirit. There's literally, like, an abundance of theories of what these fucking children are. Okay. So, some skeptics think that it's literally just kids playing fucking pranks on locals. Okay. After hearing all these stories arise. I, myself, think they're a little alien or demonic. Because, I mean, demons are known to have, like, the pitch black eyes, right? right? Yep, de- demons. I'm, yeah. But at the same time, aliens have pitch black eyes. Yeah, yeah. I right? like the changelings, though. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. The history of the black-eyed kids and where they originated from is kind of unknown. But stories have arose since the 80s within the States. Okay. Uh, There are stories of people's encounters with the black-eyed kids that have come from all across the world. Okay. So, they're known to be all over the fucking place. So, there's not, like, one designated area where they're like, yeah, they're from Ohio. Nope, they're from literally, like, you can encounter... We could literally go out for smoke after recording, and we could run into one. Well, dang. Hopefully not, because... That would be pretty fucking scary, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But, like, woo Yeah, I wouldn't want to deal with it. I don't like creepy kids. So, what happens if a, you do encounter a black-eyed kid tell and they me. come into your home? Shh. Nick coughed. <laughs> shh. 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 That's like, why the fuck are you shushing? Oh, he's... Shh. Loki's so consent. He's so He's cute. Consent? Content. You said consent. I know. I slurred he, my word. Consent. 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 He, I'm glad that you he let is. your cat consent. I do. Consent. I do. That's very fair of you. I know. Good, good. What happens if you run into a black-eyed kid or they are invited into your home? Tell me. So when people tend to invite a black-eyed kid inside, they have like they experience extremely weird things happen inside of their home at that time and after. Okay. Some people black out and wake up in the same or different timeline and others end up with severe cancer diagnosis anywhere from weeks to months after their encounter. Weird. What a weird like coin like relation. Like, mhm. Huh. And that right there is why I think maybe they could be some sort of alien life form as being in space. I would assume aliens would have some sort of radiation Mm. on them because they have to be tolerable somewhat of space. So could the black eyed kids maybe be something like, okay, I got a theory for after. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll get into theories after. Okay. Okay. Keep keep brainstorming I know, your theories. I know. You always tell me to keep it I know. The end. And also, too, alien spaceships, so like UFOs, they a lot of people have found high radiation levels in a spot that a UFO has landed in. Hmm. As well. So that's why I'm like the alien theory. I do all towards that a lot and I have I know I said demon but there's another one that I really think could also tie in with it and you're gonna laugh at me at the end but you'll understand why once I tell you some of these experiences uh, a lot of these you can really just find on the internet anywhere Uh, but the most popular of the Black Eyed Kid stories comes out of Abilene, Texas from 1996. Okay. Brian Bethel wrote his experience after he was in a movie theater parking lot one night. He had pulled over to write a check because it's the 90s and that's what you do. Okay. 
And, you know, bills got to be fucking paid, right? Mm-hmm. When, next thing you knew, two boys in hoodies were tapping on his car window. Like, tapity tap tap tapity tap 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 Oh. <laughs> if anyone gets that reference, please let me know. Because I love that movie. <laughs> As he rolled down the windows, he had this weird gut wrench and fear out of nowhere and he had no clue why he felt this way because he's just in the local movie theater parking lot they explained that they had forgotten their movie money at home and asked Brian for a ride home as they really wanted to see the Mortal Kombat movie that was out fucking Mortal Kombat but something seemed really off as they spoke Brian had then pointed out that the movie had already started. And by the time that he drove them home and came back, the movie would pretty much be over. Mm -hmm. At this point, the kids began, like, pushing Brian, saying, like, we're just kids. We don't have guns or anything. Like, why can't you drive us to our house? Which, why the fuck would you fucking say that? We're Uh, just kids. We don't have guns. That makes me think you have guns, sir. No shit, right? I don't have a like gun. That, that's a very misleading sentence. Why bring uh, it up? Exactly. Fucking weirdo. Brian also said that the way that they had spoke seemed super rehearsed, as if, you know, like, they they pre, pre-talked pre whatever they were going to say to him. <laughs> it's like they knew Planned what he was going to say, right? Mm-hmm. Scripted. Yeah, it's all, like, yeah, exactly. Uh... Brian then had that gut feeling again, and as he, you know, really looked at the kids, he noticed that their eyes were completely pitch black. Like, whites and all. Huh. Creepy as fuck. He then told the kids, sorry, I'm unable to help you out. They got upset with Brian and started banging on his car window and kept saying that they couldn't get into his car unless he says it's okay. He then, like, just flew out of the fucking parking lot. And when he looked behind him, the kids were gone. And to this day, he stands by the story and that the entire event is legit like it actually happened. That's making me have more and more... I'm wondering if you have a similar thought as I do because of something specific that I might have said. Well, what else must be invited in? Vampires. (sighs) Unless you sparkle. Gross. Just, Just gross. Between us, I'm really disgusting, and I follow a lot of Twilight sewer posting and shit posting groups. And then it made me want to watch the movies, and I forgot how terribly good that they are. Especially the baseball scene. And I was like, this is so stupid, but why do I keep watching it? <laughs> and then next thing I know, I watched all five movies, and Nick, e- yourself? And Nick even watched Eclipse with me. Oh. Yeah, I was pretty proud of myself. I just put it on and didn't tell him. I said, we're watching this. Oh, and he watched New Moon. He said, what are we watching? I said, it's a surprise. Mm. And he's like, it looks like Twilight. And I said, it's not Twilight. And he's like, what is it? And I said, New Moon. (laughs) And he's like, but it looks like Twilight. I was like, but it's not. It's New Moon. (laughs) And that went on for a solid couple minutes. And then I laughed, and I'm, and he's like, okay, what is New Moon? And I said, it's the second movie to Twilight. And I thought he was going to flip the fucking table. Like, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> I just like pulling his leg. We're going through all of the entire Marvel movies, but in, like, the chronological order. Oh. And we just got to... We just finished Black Widow today, and then... Er, and we're on Doctor Strange right now, and then we're going to watch Spider-Man, and then Thor. And so Spider-Man. you're not doing the TV shows in between either? Because I know Marvel, Agent S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, no, we're not WandaVision, doing shows. Just, and just all movies. that stuff. 
all well, intertwined Well, WandaVision too. and Loki and the third one, like the three that just came out, they're all after the movies. Same with the newer Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see the new one. Doc Ock is back, and I'm so fucking excited. Mm. And I heard the Green Goblin's little giggle, and I'm like, oh. I know he died, but if it's fucking James Franco playing him... James Franco didn't die. Not him, his dad. Oh. His dad was the Green Goblin. Yeah, but that was the Tobey Maguire ones. I know, but it's the same Doc Ock. Oh, is it? Yeah, because it's a multiverse. They're intertwining. The f oh, right. Yeah, yeah. It, I've watched that trailer It just like sucks that, like, like, Andrew Garfield straight up said, I will not do this, and Tobey will... Maguire basically said the same thing. I'm like, but it would be so perfect if both of you did it. I wish. Anyways. At least Toby. <laughs> Sorry, that was I love way... when Toby Maguire has his little emo hair in the third movie. Anyways, Sorry. that's besides the point. Way too many things that you need to cut out now. Yeah, that's okay. We need to stop being good friends and talking. Uh, one of the many accounts that happened as well was in England. In 2014, Lee Brickley was being interviewed on his research. He had he was investigating like other people's accounts of black eyed kids and he came across this account in England of this mother and her daughter who were out on a walk. Mm -hmm. And they suddenly heard a child scream. Oh no. Yeah, uh, it uh, that's never a good sign. No. Uh and you know, so they came across the little girl in the woods on their walk, and she had her hands over her eyes, which, you know, red flag number two. Yeah. Um, at that point, I would have dipped the fuck out. I wouldn't, I mean, but that's just me. When the mother asked if the little girl was okay, if she, you know, were, were you the fucking one screaming? Like, there's no other kid. I just see you and my other kid, right? Yeah. Uh, the girl suddenly dropped her hands and revealed her pitch black eyes. The mother ran, so, like she fucking grabbed her daughter's hand and she booked it. Nope, I get it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't deal with that either. Uh, when they turned around to see if the little girl was there after they got a safe enough distance away, she was completely gone. Huh. Almost like a luring thing. Mm-hmm. So many Which things. is one of the things that I had mentioned at the beginning in one of their descriptions, right? So it's almost like they're like siren vampires. They're like a Pandora's box of every supernatural being in one. Yeah. They're like, you're in a, and then you just, it's like a snow globe and you shake it and then it's like. So I don't I can't think of the right fucking word when you like oh, a bingo thing, right? When you like shake the ball and like a number shoots it, it's like that. But it's like which which supernatural being am I gonna be today? Goblet Boop. of fire. <laughs> I have a goblet name? of fire. Harry, did you put your name in the goblet of fire? <laughs> Fucking, why is he so angry? He's not supposed to be an angry person. Why would you do that? <laughs> He's a dick, like that whole movie, though. He's a dick. And that actor as Dumbledore is just a dick in general. Dumbledore is supposed to be. But the gentle. actor that played him in the first two movies was so much nicer. Because that's how Dumbledore is supposed to be. But then he died, and then they brought in a new actor. And that's he because he didn't watch. He didn't watch. The first two movies, he didn't read the books. He had no clue what this character was supposed to be, and just acted. What a dick! You're supposed to read. At the least books. I'm pretty sure that's what I heard happen. But I don't know. Read Dumbledore's books. supposed to be a gentle soul, not aggressive. Uh, one time, uh, like a year or so ago, when I first got really deep into Black Eyed Kids. Uh, I came across this story on Reddit, I believe, and it was a couple who had let two black-eyed children into their house, yep. and it was a very weird and disturbing experience that they had had. They said something about the kids asking them to be let inside because it was winter, 
They wanted to wait for their parents. So when they allowed them in, they got this weird feeling. Mm. They finally saw their eyes and they were complete black and the kids were like, hey, our parents are outside and there was a man in a black suit, similar to Men in Black. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks later, they both became extremely ill and found out that they had rare forms of cancer that only happen from radiation ex exposure. Oh. So could the weird feelings that they had from the black-eyed kids be radiation poisoning? Maybe, like, because I know, like, if you're in and around radiation for too long, it, I'm sure it can make you feel weird and hallucinated. It's, it's, and it's turning my gears of theories, okay? Just, just, just wait till the end. I got <laughs> one. I got um, some really twisted theory. Now, I'm pretty sure that was on, like, No Sleep or something, or Black Eyed Kids subreddit. So I don't know how true that was, and I'm just kind of going off what I can remember. But a similar experience that I found on a different website was an elder couple had a knock on the door one day, and it was a black eyed, it was two black eyed children, and they asked if they could use the bathroom. So the woman let them in, and as they had walked to the bathroom, she noticed that they all had black eyes. And when her husband walked in from the other room, she, you know, was like, hey, did you see those kids' fucking eyes? Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, but my nose is fucking gushing blood. So, you know, he's suffering this really bad nosebleed and suddenly the power goes out. And as the kids returned to the front room where the couple was, they said that their parents were outside and left. There were two men in the driveway in black suits waiting for the children. And not long after they left, the power had turned back on. And they started to have really weird and odd things happening after that for the next couple weeks. Uh, the the couple owned four cats, and three of them had disappeared. Mm -hmm. The fourth cat remaining was found dead in, like, a pool of its own blood. Aww. Right? Oh, Why is this whole died. episode like Harry Potter, man? <sighs> the, so the husband went to the doctor's. Uh, because he was still having nosebleeds. And turns out he ended up having an extremely aggressive skin type of skin cancer. Huh. Mm-hmm. Weird. Now, I found a website called thoughtcatalog.com. Okay. And I actually discovered it through Loie Lane's video of Black Eyed Kids. And... This website has, I want to say, like, 16, I think, to 20 Black Eyed Kid experiences. Okay. Now, I'm not saying every experience that I'm telling you today is 100% legit. Mm -hmm. Some of these, like I said, could be, you know, just shit on fucking Reddit. People you know, it's just stories. urban legends, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to, um, sorry, piece of ice stuck in my throat. <laughs> I'm going to read one of the stories on here as a quote. Uh, the person who wrote it is called Foo Master 2. Okay. And, again, it is on the website thoughtcatalog.com. You can find all of them on there, and some of them are really creepy. I just picked one of the shorter ones, because some of them were really, really long. <laughs> and I didn't want to take up too much time on a story for just, like, an experience. Mm-hmm. Especially when this one's pretty cool. So this one is called You Must Let Me In by Foo Master 2. 
On March 17th, 2008, I had my one and only encounter with a black-eyed kid. Before my experience, I had never heard of anything that had to do with the black-eyed kids. I was 12. I was sitting outside of a hairdresser's in an old Chevy pickup waiting for my mom to get her hair cut. About 15 minutes had passed and I saw some kid walking back and forth along the sidewalk in front of my parked car. At first, I thought I recognized him as one of my friends from school, so I banged on the front windshield until he looked my way. It was not anyone I knew. At this point, I was not scared at all. Not yet. The boy walked over to the side of my car and just stares. I think, I think to let me get a good look at his eyes, to freak me out, and let me tell you, if you have never seen a black-eyed kid, you have no idea what to imagine. Pupils, black as the night sky. The boy whispers, you must let me in. And then I lock the car doors and duck down into the space below the seats. Five minutes later, he was gone. When my mother got into the car, she told me the boy, ugh, she told me a boy with black eyes had came into the hairdressers and insisted for my mother to give him the keys to the car, she refused, and thank God she did. You must let me in. So. That's creepy as shit. It is really and creepy. Like, how did he know which one was his mama? No shit. Uh, so, so there was really wasn't a whole lot of, like, information on Black Eyed Kids themselves, and it's mostly just personal experiences and the basic description and techniques that I described at the beginning during their encounters. Uh, but, like I said, you can find a whole bunch of experiences on the interwebs. And there's even a subreddit called Black Eyed Kids and Black Eyed Children. And there's people, stories, theories, all that shit on there. You can also find stories and experiences on Creepypasta and the subreddit No Sleep. Okay. I'm pretty sure No Sleep is where I heard the one that I mentioned earlier that was off of Reddit from a while ago. It, I read it like well over a year ago, so I'm just kind of going off memory a little bit there. Would that one also have your stories of the hat man and all of those kind of things? No sleep and creepy pasta, a thousand percent would have those on there. I was thinking the no sleep mm -hmm. because I thought sleep and thought of that instantly. Yeah, no sleep is a good Reddit when you cannot sleep. So, <laughs> if anyone also has any personal experiences with black eyed kids, children, you know, and you are willing to share them with us, we would love to hear it because, yes, it is creepy, but. I think it would be really cool to hear a personal experience yeah. firsthand instead of reading them from sources on the internet. And um, so I do also think a lot of it is just urban legend. Mm -hmm. And if it is real, I think it could be alien demonic or vampire but it is also very hard for me to lean more that way because there is so little information on them but a lot of the stories are very repetitive with the same experiences so I don't know what are your thoughts okay so hear me out all right. Let because me I feel like lately, readjust my seat. Lately, I have been doing pretty damn well at making up the strangest theories for your cases that, like, Excited. nobody else has. Okay. So you keep mentioning radiation, mm -hmm. which got my wheels turning. Yeah. And then you were mentioning children and then, quote, unquote, parents in black suits. Who else wears black suits with, like, sunglasses like Men in Black? Death. Okay. So he 
keep following, keep following. <laughs> the men that are in black, they are, um, what are they called? Like angels of death, but they're... Grim Reaper? Grim Reapers. They're Reapers, okay? They're the Reapers for the children that haven't gone where they're supposed to go yet. Mm -hmm. And the children are the ones that died in Chernobyl. Little cherubs. Little Chernobyl cherubs. They're the, ter the, they're the children of Chernobyl. That's Oof. why they give off the radiation. And that's why they're still wandering, because they died in an unsettling way. And death is making them try to collect souls to earn their way into the afterlife. Hmm. I don't know how that theory all came up. <laughs> or there's iron vampires, okay? Uh, but is that not a great theory? Am I not amazing? It's not a bad theory. Thank you. It's not a bad theory I'm at so all. I'm so proud of it. I still am leaning more towards alien when it comes to radiation. Fine. Only because, like I said <laughs> earlier, UFO, like, where they've landed, leaves radiation. So I'm assuming aliens themselves also have radiation coming off of them. But at the same time, because you have to let them in... It makes me think vampire. It's very vampire very vampire. And the luring is very siren. And chan channeling, you know, changeling. Sorry. Changelings. Yeah, changeling, sorry. It's it's also very, like, even fey, it's very fey, like, very fairy. Like, because they're all tricksters and they, you know, and a lot of people, too, you see a, a helpless child, it's easier to let a child in a helpless child and a helpless adult. Yeah, that's why I was thinking kind of like demony because we've mentioned a lot before on the podcast mm -hmm. that demons often present themselves as children. They do. Like it's, it's which is so why I was hard. thinking demon and the black eyes like a demon, and that the men in the suits are reapers trying to mm -hmm. help them go between the afterlife and bringing other souls, or because they give them cancer so that they collect more souls. Maybe they're just... My theory doesn't make sense to you, does it? Demons who just want to fuck shit up and the men in black are... They're Uber drivers. Between the afterlife and here. Like an afterlife Uber. See, that's kind of what I'm saying, you know? Like, he's, he's their passageway between the afterlife and here. Mm -hmm. And he brings them up. Because, you know, innocent mm -hmm. faces to get but more souls. How can you guarantee they're going to get the souls of those people because not every person gets sick and dies? And every, that encounters them. They have to get a soul to be allowed mm -hmm. to, to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. But if they don't do it, then they yeah. have to keep coming back. Yeah. I don't know. Just okay. My mind is just like <laughs> flowing. I'm trying to wrap my head around. I, I know. Around your. If theory. somebody understands what I am trying to say. No, I understand. I'm just and agrees with trying me. to. <laughs> if not, make it into a horror movie because I think it would be amazing. Okay. <laughs> or like a uh, good episode of Supernatural or something. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, maybe they're also, like I said, like a Pandora's box for, your, you know, just see what they're going to be today. Or a magic eight ball. Shook of, it up like a boggle. Yeah. Or a magic eight ball, and then whatever pops up in the front's whatever you're going to be that day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they could almost be like a a trickster god. Or maybe they're Heinz 57 cryptid style. That means nothing to me. Did you see my eyes glaze over? I did. Heinz 57, <laughs> basically a mixed breed. Okay, I was like, what does ketchup things? have to do with this? No, not ketchup, <laughs> you silly goose. No, eyes, um, ketchup? No, like if you, like if a dog 
when it's like a mutt because it's got so many different breeds in it. It's called Heinz 57. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So who knows? It's, uh, we, the, who La. knows <laughs> what they are and what they want. And if you have any experiences or theories, we want to know. I must hear experience them. this. Yeah. Black eyed children, come to me. She's just staring out the window right now. Come to me. Hoping that. If we hear a knock on the fucking door, I swear to God, I'm going to oh. stab something. My God, I would probably shit myself. I'm all words, guys, okay? If something actually happened, I would be hiding. I. Okay. Story time. Like two weeks ago, me and Ron are in bed, about to go to sleep. Okay? We hear this like weird loud bang. And it sounds like someone's trying to get open my garage door downstairs. And it's right below our bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, Ron goes, he's looking out the front window, trying to see if he can see anybody. And he goes downstairs and he's checking it all out. You know, we thought maybe like somebody was trying to get in the house. Mm -hmm. Cause we got a lot of sketch bags around here, you know, and a lot of people that break into places. And I mean, we just had an armed robbery like this past week. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, you know, we're a little sketched up. He locks the door, whatever. Didn't think, we, we, we kind of forgot about it, but the whole time he's wandering around the house, I'm like leaned over the bed with my hand. I just saw somebody with their dog walking by and scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, they're here. I should tell my mom to just come stare into your window someday. She does that sometimes when she walks by and she sees me. She'll st stand outside and stare at me, and I just stand through the window with the curtain open waving at her. My mother lives down the street from Olivia. And we creep each other out all the time. They're friends. We tags. Sometimes. Gross. Anyways, <laughs> so the whole time that he's downstairs, I have my hand, like, underneath my bed kind of hanging off. And I've got my hand kind of moving back and forth between two weapons that are under my bed. These weapons are a fake replica of Harley Quinn's bat. <laughs> and the sword of Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> and in my head, I'm, my instinct went to grab the sword. And I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with this if someone's trying to rob my house? Go down and be like, I have the sword of Gryffindor! <laughs> And fucking attack somebody? No. So anyway, the only downfall is we live in Canada, so she's the one that would get put in jail, not yes. the intruder. Anyways, you know, long story short, this this is me being a boob. Nothing actually happened. Actually, what it was is that the wire holding my garage door oh. open had snapped and let go on itself, and Ron fixed it a few days later when I noticed that the garage door had actually been unlocked. Or he noticed it was unlocked. But, yeah. So... That's what it was actually, but I thought it was funny that my instinct when I thought someone was robbing the house was to go back and forth between a Harley Quinn bat and the sword of Gryffindor. Hey, sometimes your, you know, your memorabilia from like TV shows and movies and shit comes in handy. Yeah, like your cosplay weapons come in handy. Yeah, like Ron has uh, Trunks' sword from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, fuck. I got him that. He. I want to say he also has the sword of Xavier or whatever. And he's got like three or four samurai swords. I don't own a sword. He likes swords. I like swords. And I have a key thing from that... Will you get me Cloud Sword from Final Fantasy VII? The, okay, there's a game that's kind of like Final Fantasy, but it's Disney stuff. Do you know what I mean? Magic Kingdom? Magic you know, Kingdom. Yeah, Kingdom. Okay, I have Kingdom of Hearts. Kingdom of Hearts. Okay. I also, next to those two weapons, I have a key from Kingdom of Hearts. Mm. That's the um, Nightmare Before Christmas one. Mm. So I have three choices, but that one's basically just foam. So I would have to throw plants at intruders in my house. Throw Nick at them. He's light enough you could throw him. Probably. And I, he... He'd make yeah. a much better impact. He would. I'll just use him like a bat and just swing him around. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> Nick, give me your hand. Woo! <laughs> by the ankles and just whoop! 
that it'd be like a movie. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed our end <laughs> of being hilarious, as we think we are. It's been um, a very manic episode for us today. Yes! <laughs> and we hope that you enjoy another week of Spooktober. Spooky and, spooky. You know, that means there's only a couple weeks left. Until two weeks. Two weeks left. Until we're actually experiencing the Devil's Night and Halloween. Special thanks to Dylan Sears for the theme song and Sally Gunter for the cover art. Support us on Patreon and like, share, rate, and subscribe to us on all of our social media pages and your podcast stream and service. Do you have any personal stories or suggestions for the show? Email us at bloodgutsandbooze at gmail.com.